Hi everyone, thank you so much for watching Get Fresh TV. I'm Jenny Boyle and today I'm getting fresh with Rachel Priest. <laughs> Rachel's a yoga teacher who published an article on Elephant Journal and it's received almost a half a million views and it's just a very intense and really vulnerable situation that uh, that she was put in and she had the courage to write about it. So thank you so much Rachel for coming on today and uh, chatting with me about your experience. Thank you for having me. It's such an honor to be here. I'm so thankful. For those of us who haven't read the article, can you give us a brief summary of what it was about, what the name of it was, and um, I guess what inspired you to write it? Of course, yeah. So the, the article was called, This is What a Real Yoga Body Looks Like. Um, and it's, I was teaching a class, and after a class, one woman came up to me and told me that she thought I was a good teacher, but that I needed to lose some weight um, to be a better teacher. Um, the idea of just, I wasn't the picturesque version of what she thought I should be. And I was completely dumbfounded by what she said. And I didn't know what to do, and I was very upset initially, because um, you don't, you know, people don't know me, that you can never know someone from just seeing them. And I've struggled with an eating disorder for 10 years. So for someone to come up and just say that to me when I'm finally at a good place in my life, it was just kind of like ground shattering and just blew my mind because yoga, it's where size, nothing matters. It's about what's inside. So I was shocked when my external appearance got brought into the, into the room and into the environment. And um, so it started out with me being angry and upset and not knowing what to do and going back into all my old mental kind of patterns of the disorder and of the illness and then I realized oh heck no this woman is not gonna destroy me no. <laughs> like no. I'm awesome <laughs> I'm like I'm amazing I'm great my body is fine and I'm the size I'm meant to be I'm no other size because this is where I'm supposed to be so in a nutshell that is what the article was written about. I'm just yeah. empowering people to accept where they are and to not try to be something that they're not. Yeah. We always want to strive. I think the most important thing is to feel healthy. You know, if you feel if you feel sick, if your body feels sluggish, if you feel weighed down, then you don't feel healthy. Yeah. But if I'm the size that I am and I feel healthy and I feel strong, then who's to say I'm I'm not okay? Even yeah. if I'm not you know, a certain size. Um, so shifting that perspective from the superficial of how you look into mm -hmm. an, more of an internal perspective as of how you feel and gauging exactly. that as basically the, the yardstick, if you will, as to what's important is what you're saying. Exactly. Yeah. Did she actually pinch you? Yes, she oh. did. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> I read that. I was like, oh my God. I like I used to when I was a kid I used to do martial arts and I was I was actually had this thought like if someone came up to me and pinched me I would be like oh I think I would like drop them right there like yoga class or not oh my god like what did you what did you like what did you do I wish I could have seen my reaction because I think my face just like I'm pretty sure I just kind of white it out just like <laughs> I don't think there was any expression at all I think I was shocked just shock. Did you think right away, I've got to go home and just clear my plate and I need to write about this right now? No, I think the first thing I did was call one of the girls who I went through my teacher training with. Mm -hmm. um, her name is Becca. She's, yeah. she's wonderful. I love her. And she struggled with something relatively similar that I did. And I just was furious yeah. and so mad yeah. and so upset. So it was really just, anger that it was... That was oh, crazy. yeah. Okay. It was totally anger that fueled... It, it was anger that fueled me writing the article, um, which, you know, some people say you shouldn't ever feel anger, but at the same time, you need that, that kind of grittiness, that pain to push through yeah. to get you somewhere else. Yeah. Um, so... I love how yoga teachers are like, you, you feel anger? You're a yoga teacher and you get angry. It's like newsflash. Yoga teachers are human beings. Right? Yeah. Um, so, so Becca, yes. you were talking to Becca. 
Yeah, so it, it, she had to calm me down because I was really upset. And I was like, I, you know, went through the whole everything about what you just said. You go through self-doubt. You go through, oh, gosh, well, maybe I shouldn't eat for the next three or four days and really need to, you know, just run and weight lift and just, just drink water. And it's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. <laughs> like, you know, one comment sending, how can one person's thoughts and opinions of me send me back two years of growth, then I know other people probably get affected that way too. So what I'm hearing is that you kind of used this, this anger, this real um, frustration and this temptation to go way back into old patterns of disordered eating and bad body thoughts and kind of preoccupation with body. You had that tendency yet you didn't react to it and you didn't go back to that. Is that right? Right. Congratulations. Thank you. Deserves a little bit of credit. What do you think it was about your growth and your spiritual path that brought you to a point that you could say, hey, this isn't me. Um, that This is this lady's problem. And I'm not going to let this uh, throw me back into these old patterns. What, what was that? Can you tell us about that a little bit? Yeah, I think at this point, I've been on a yo-yo for 10 years. Yeah. And I'm sick of it. <laughs> I just want to get off it. I want to get off this roller coaster. I don't want to be defined anymore mentally by, you know, this mentally being allowed to be just thrown from here to there and allow people's comments to really upset me. Okay. I I'm stronger than that. I always have been, but I chose not to be. And I think in life we have a choice. Everything is a choice. You know, we choose, we choose our joy, we choose to love, we choose to be happy, we choose to never give up. And I've always chosen to never give up because there's been many times when I've just wanted to just throw the towel in and just be like, ugh, I'm done. <laughs> um, but it was finally just like, you know what, people face this every day. I've faced this roller coaster for you know, 10 years at this point, I'm strong enough to finally say, no, this is not okay to be spoken to like this. This is not okay to allow someone's just flippant thoughts of what they think we should be to really deeply affect me. Mm -hmm. And if I get affected, I know that thousands and thousands of other people get affected too. Absolutely. So let's just <laughs> say no together. And just be strong together and just not allow this to just break our world anymore. Because we can choose we can choose to not let it affect us. And I think it was finally me choosing choosing to be stronger than it. And to stand up for everyone who has ever had anything said something against them that they didn't feel strong enough at the time yeah. to have a rebuttal. Yeah. And I finally had my rebuttal. Mm -hmm. So I'm hearing, um, it's nice actually, what, I, what I'm hearing is that you're sick of the yo-yo. So it's, but it's not, there's, it's, it's a distinction though, because a lot of people are sick of the yo-yo of dieting, right? They're sick of, you know, uh, starving themselves or restricting their food and then going up into this binge. I mean, that's the cycle, right? It's diet, binge, guilt, repeat. And yeah. so that was one facet of it, but it sounded like what really called to you um, was the yo-yo in your mind. And in your, in your heart, in your emotions. And you were like, no, I don't want to be uh, susceptible to other people's opinions anymore. And that was the yo-yo that you really wanted to hone in on. Is that right? Yes. That's awesome. Yes. Because um, the way I've always seen it is any, an eating disorder is an addiction. It is so mental. It is all up in here. And, you know, I'm not a doctor. I can't say what it is and what it isn't and, you know, whatever. But having experienced it, it's less of what I'm externally doing, it's what I'm internally thinking. And it's your brain that's mm. your mind of this, we call it in yoga, your monkey mind, yep. telling you all this stuff that just is not true. But we listen to it. Yeah. And we accept it. And we move on with it. And it's just, no, you're wrong. <laughs> yeah. So and that, and that's, kind of that's the yo-yo I'm talking about, just the, the mental looking at yourself like, mm, I don't like the way that looks in the mirror. It's like, okay, just stop. Just stop. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so yes, it, for me, it would be more of the mental, 
the mental roller coaster in yo-yo. Well, I'm glad you came out of it and I'm glad you, you're approaching it with, you know, using the experience and sharing the experience beyond that. And um, the article, this is what a real yoga body looks like, has received almost half a million views by now. Like, how does that make it's, you feel? I mean, it was amazing. Yeah. It's, it's really helped me um, because I, in the last couple of years, have been kind of wading through, not really knowing what I should be doing and, you know, what I want to do. And this kind of made me realize this is something I really want to do is to, to write and to try to, you know, help people that are struggling and being quiet about it. I love so. how we're having this this conversation about finding peace with ourselves, and there's birds chirping in the background. Like it's so fitting. Right? <laughs> it's like someone turned on this fall music. All of a sudden, ah. <laughs> so um, the title of the article I've seen just browsing about on Elephant since then. Um, this is what a real yoga body. There's been a, a lot of um, a lot of conversation going on about that. There's been almost a lot of kind of counter articles, if you will, like, you know, I've been skinny since whatever, and I eat whatever I want, and I have a real body. What are, what are your thoughts on that? Like on, just on the term real yoga body? Um, kind of funny enough, um, I didn't make that title. You can have a real yoga body if you're a double zero, if you're, you know, a 32, it doesn't matter. Yeah. There, you know, that... It really, it hurt me when I saw the negative feedback from that, yeah. especially since it, it, it wasn't coming yeah. from you. Like, oh. Yeah. Um, so I, it's just, I take, I mean, I never got upset about anything that anyone said um, because I understand their opinion. And yes, you can be a size two and have always been that size and be 100% healthy. And you have a 100% real yoga body too. I just, you know, do you understand? <laughs> oh, yeah. And it's yeah. so hard, too, when you put out such a such an incredibly vulnerable piece and mm -hmm. and then you have people kind of kind of slagging you about it. And you're like, hey, shouldn't everyone just be really proud of me that I put this out? Like, I remember one of my pieces, too, and I was like, oh, yeah, I guess there's always going to be, um, you know, people that have their opinions, which is obviously just fine. Another question that I had was, do you think the lady read the article? Um, she might have, um, I'm not totally sure. And it's, it was never one of those things. She kept coming to my class after it Okay. and I was never rude. I was never upset because I just realized it's your opinion that you felt the need to share that I refuse to agree with, <laughs> but you're entitled to that opinion if that's what you want, you know, um, so she might have read it, uh, but I'm, I couldn't be sure, I guess, that makes sense. Yeah, it does make sense. And I think it's interesting because the article has the ability to affect a lot of people. And I think in particular, people who may have had comments made about their bodies or, you know, unsolicited advice or opinions that <clears throat> they've kind of just, you know, had dumped on them. But it, it also has the ability to affect people who maybe feel entitled to not only, and I mean, there's two issues, right? It's, you're entitled to your opinion, of course, but are you really entitled to express that opinion when your words could potentially be hurtful to someone else? And I think that's a really good question. And I don't really think I know a lot of people that would ever, you know, be so tacky, just saying, but, <laughs> but you know, it, it does, like I say, it makes you think twice. Your com do your comments to people, um, what kind of an impact do they have? And I think that's one of the most beautiful things that you've done, Rachel, is that you've articulated, um, A, you know, this this is where I wanted to go. You're, you're not saying, I'm a yoga teacher, I'm enlightened, and I didn't even think about going back to my restricting days or my eating disorder days. You're saying, no, I totally thought about that, and I totally wanted to go back there because that's that urge, right? Like that, that, that stimulus that happens, and we all of a sudden think, okay, to cope with this, I'm going to go back on a diet. I'm going to go back on just drinking water and doing yoga two or three times a day. You acknowledge that. You made that whole, um, you just, you gave some really nice credit to the fact that you went back there and then, and you were like, no, this is my choice. Just like you said earlier, we always have a choice. This is my choice and I'm choosing differently. And I think, um, there was actually a couple of questions that you asked in the article 
and I wanted to um, just kind of to bring those up with uh, if, if that's okay they're just quoting directly from your article yeah. um, looking into our own lives where today can we realize that we are behaving in a certain way to please others so can you can you tell me maybe a little bit about what's behind that question for you I I think for myself, I've always just tried to please everyone around me. Mm -hmm. And I've always had kind of this guilt trip thing in myself where if I feel like someone isn't totally happy with any situation, even if it has me in it or not, I try to make the situation better for them. Mm -hmm. And it can be exhausting. And you realize you know, you can go so many years, you can study something in school, you can have a job, you can start a lifestyle that really was something you never actually wanted because you felt like you needed to do it. And so I think for me, I've just decided I don't, I'm just done living for other people. I'm always going to be giving, I'm always going to take care of my family and friends and give them everything that I can, but realize that the number one, first and foremost, most important person in my life is myself. In a hallelujah, sister. <laughs> in a non selfish way, like, you know, not to be selfish, but just to realize my own happiness and my own peace. If I can love myself, that is what's going to allow me to bring peace and love to other people. If I'm not at a happy place with myself, then how on earth? Do I expect to please other people or to help other people? You know, so it's, I think it's just, and this has been huge in my life in the last couple of months, even realizing I'm, I'm about to start making some big changes and it's about me realizing I have to please me and to love me because I'm the only person who's going to do it first. And then everything else will start to fall into place. So Absolutely. The other question was, where are we not truly ourselves because someone made us feel inadequate to be ourselves and said that we needed to change? That's a powerful one. Yeah. I think, again, it's kind of going along with, are you pleasing other people or are you pleasing yourselves? Yeah. When I notice, I can give you this one day, it's been... It happened in February of this year where I taught a yoga class in the morning. I weightlifted after that. I went on a run by myself. I went on a cycle, surfed, and did beach yoga. This was all in like a mid-morning afternoon by myself. And I felt so at peace because I was doing everything that I love to do, but I was by myself other than teaching the class in the morning, I had been by myself the whole time. And I was able to just feel wonderful. Mm -hmm. And I still remember it to this day. That was probably one of the most special days of my life. Yeah. Because it was everything that I felt that I needed to be doing, mm -hmm. I was doing. Yes. And I was doing it for myself. I was in the moment. I wasn't with anyone else. I was just living. Because we can get bogged down with work and friends and habits and, you know, whatever it may be. Um, so I think just taking the time out to realize what you truly love to do, what makes you really feel at peace, and then trying to work towards that a little bit once a day. Do you feel like your relationship with and opinion of your body affects moving forward? 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that was kind of an obvious question, but really, I mean, it, I think it's just interesting because so few people like, I, and that's part of the reason why I love what you're doing and why I reached out and asked you if you would do this interview, um, is like body issues. I mean, their body issues, eating disorders, they're so hush hush. And the truth is, I mean, okay, there's, there's eating disorders and then there's, kind of preoccupation with food and body. And although they're on the same spectrum, they really are kind of different. Like I always say there's this, um, this spectrum where you have like an eating disorder over here and then you have 
complete peace with food over here. And they're so categorized in black and white. You either have an eating disorder or you're totally fine and the birds are chirping every single day. And it's like, what about this huge space in between the two of them where I think, you know, and I don't know the statistics, 95% um, of facts are apparently made up anyways. So, <laughs> but it's like, what about all the people in between? And I, I would go, you know, so far as to say, that's it. That's a significant percentage of people um, yeah. that are somewhere in between having peace with food in their body and, and having a, an eating disorder, like a clinically diagnosed eating disorder. And it's just, it's just interesting. I mean, it, it's, it's unfortunate that people aren't talking about it, but that's like I say, that's why I love what you're doing, creating that community and giving people that support and saying, hey, look, I'm going through this. And if I've gone through this, then I know there's a lot of other people that have gone through this too, despite, you know, people maybe saying that, oh, I'm, I'm out there. I've gotten that one a lot. You're so out there. It's like, <laughs> please, I'm just putting a name to what people are already feeling and experiencing. And I know that now firsthand because when I do put out something fully vulnerable and someone comes up to me and they start crying because they're like, your article changed this and changed that. And it's like, you know, and you probably gotten that a lot with half a million reads, Missy half a million, <laughs> but it's like, you know, you need that at a point, you need that certain validation where it's like, you're treading lightly. You're like, okay, I'm going to put this out there and I'm talking about this harsh thing and I'm talking about this harsh thing. And then people start coming in and they're like, Thank you so much for putting words to that because I've been feeling like that for so long. And then you start to feel a little bit more strength with it. Mm -hmm. So it's really empowering. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's and it's just heartbreaking because one thing I've always, that's so difficult about eating disorders is any addiction is incredibly difficult. You can lose your life to any addiction, whether it's drugs, whether it's alcohol, um, and you know anything food whatever it may be but you have to live to eat that is the one thing you cannot cut out of your life and we all those people in between the the gray area that you were talking about you know it's it's not something that you can just cut out of your life and never touch it again because yeah. you have to eat to live yeah. and that's that's the thing with eating disorders is it's just, it's, it's all trying to learn how to eat again. And it sounds so simple and yet it is so difficult. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people, I just, I understand where so many people are because, you know, I'm in the gray area. Many yeah. people are in the gray area of still kind of like, ooh, I'm not sure, <laughs> you know trying to figure it out and it's it's a journey and we need to be together for each other because it's hard mm -hmm. it's incredibly difficult to try to learn how to live doing something that your body needs in order to survive that you don't understand how to do anymore especially when you're in tight clothes for your profession yeah <laughs> right I always love talking to yoga teachers because it's like well yeah like I just you know Every time I work, I have to go put on spandex, and um, that can be challenging as well. Mm hmm Yeah. So your blog, mm -hmm. what's, what's the address for your blog? It's just actually through my website, okay. which is uh, just rachelpriest.com. Okay. Wow. That was a whole lot of incredible information and valuable tips, and uh, I'm really glad and grateful to have had this interview with you, Rachel. So thank you so much for coming on to Get Fresh TV. Thank you again so much for having me. It was so wonderful to talk to you and finally meet you. Yeah, finally, hey. So um, everyone, if you want to check out Rachel's work, which I strongly encourage, you can visit her website at rachelpriest.com. I can include the link in the blog post. You'll be able to check that out. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you, Rachel, for visiting, being interviewed yeah. by Get Fresh TV, and uh, we'll see all of you on the next interview. Thanks again.